It's a very exciting afternoon today because I have my very close friend Nick Ruiz, aka Wise Guy, uh, who is a professional pro wrestler and has wrestled all over the world. He's an independent wrestler and uh, he wrestles in front of thousands and thousands of people. So Nick, thank you so much for being here and let's talk wrestling. I appreciate it. Let's do it. What's he going to do with it? So you got into wrestling, it's been a childhood dream for you, the mm -hmm. wrestling, right? Yeah. How old were you when you decided that that's what you wanted to do as a professional wrestler? Mm, I would say after the first time that I watched it, do you remember I was how old, hooked. Do you remember how old you were? I was like three years old. No, wait, three yeah. years old. Mm -hmm. Wow. My mom, um, my mom sat me down on her lap to watch it, and my fondest memory was um, Hulk Hogan body slamming Andre the Giant at WrestleMania three in uh, the Pontiac Silverdome. Right, I remember um, Andre the Giant. Ninety three thousand people. Ninety three thousand people. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. the biggest question that I'm sure you get all the time in the wrestling part of it is how hard are the hits? Because you know they've got these theories about like fake blocks and punches and things like that. It's kind of staged and stuff like that, but from knowing you for a very long time and watching you wrestle and I've been personally at ringside and I've seen you guys land on the mat and go into those turnbuckles and you know get hit by chairs and you know into into uh, metal posts and stuff like that I mean that's that stuff is real I mean you get injured right right absolutely yeah um, that mat that ring is about a quarter inch uh, uh, like padding and the rest are plywood and metal beams. There's not much give to it. It, I mean, the first bump that I ever took when I first started getting trained, it, it feels like the whole wind is knocked out of you. You, you. you cannot breathe. And if you don't tuck your chin when you fall, you get, you'll smack your head on the mat and you get severe whiplash and or concussion. Wow. Yeah. What is, what was your biggest injury, bro? I broke my tip and fib in uh, the summer of 2018 in a match. Yeah, I jumped off the middle rope and my leg just gave out as a freak accident. It wasn't anybody's fault. Just, it happens. You know, you're in a contact sport. We don't have padding. There's no off season. It's, you know, ground and pound. Go until you break. Well, I don't like to um, quote unquote uh, can my matches. There's a lot of guys out there that like to call their matches from A all the way to Z. That's not my thing. I don't like to do that. Um, right. I'm old school. I like to go out there and just say, let's work. We'll call it on the fly. Okay. So we, we, we go, we, we, we adapt as we go. And I just like it that way. If you're a professional, there's no reason why with the other professional in the ring, you guys can't make that work. You can call some stuff. You can get a middle, a, a, mid, a, a beginning, a middle, and an end, but we fill in the blanks. You know, it's right. like creating a house. You don't need a, a, you don't need to know how to put on a roof. You know how to do it. You may have your own way, but you're going to do it your way, which right. is fine. Yeah. Windows, same thing. You don't, you, you don't need someone to say, all right, well, you have to do this, you have to do that, then you do this, then you do that. No, that's all like, it's just canned stuff. Right. And when you become canned, you're cookie cutter. Nobody wants a cookie cutter wrestler. I don't. You know, I, I try to set myself apart. So, talk me through those early years where you started all this stuff, and then obviously your passion for wrestling. But how you evolved into the pro wrestler that you are right now? How did it all um, come together? I for just you? decided I wanted to be trained. I wanted to be a pro wrestler, of course, um, all the way back to my childhood years Here in Fresno correct right. um, and at first I was gonna go to a school called APW all pro wrestling which is based out of Hayward which is the Bay Area I was gonna go um, get trained over there uh, didn't work out um, I would have had to get a job chance transfer I was newly married at the time I had a young son um, so I decided to go get trained in uh, Fresno which was my hometown still is by uh, a company that's no longer around it was NEW North American Wrestling You had a quite a turbulent childhood, yes. And um, um, what was some of the challenging things that you had growing up that that you could you could resonate today that kind of fueled you to be the man that you are now? 
Um, well, um, I never met my biological father. Um, the man who raised me, I loved to death. He passed away um, two weeks after I graduated high school. Um, you know, he had his own personal issues. He had, he had a drug habit, uh, a, a very, very uh, tough alcohol habit, and he, he kicked him. He did. And that, that's, addiction's hard to, hard to fight. It really is. It, it, you know, I don't wish addiction on anybody because it's a battle that can, at times, lead to your demise. And, um, you know, he had a freak accident where he got injured when he was in construction and ended up um, getting addicted to uh, uh, prescription pain meds, which ended, ended, ultimately ended his life. And uh, that was a tough pill to swallow. Um, my mom has some depression issues and kind of fell apart. My mom still to this day hasn't remarried um, because that was the love of her life. And um, I, <clears throat> I saw a lot of people go down that, that, that path with drugs, alcohol. You know, I'm not gonna single anybody out, but I just saw a lot of it. And I promised myself and I made a promise to my kids that I was never gonna go down that path. I was never gonna drink. I was never gonna do drugs. I was never gonna do any type, type of recreational, you know, substance abuse or anything. And still to this day at 37 years old, I've never touched anything. And just in general as a man, uh, what are some of the things that you think that uh, the young men of today can take away from someone like yourself that has discipline and things like that, that is successful? What would be the message that you would give people watching this afternoon? Mm, I think nowadays there's a lot of, um, a lot of guys or people in general that are very go with the flow, you know, bad influences and bad habits are hard to break, like I said earlier. You know, and if you're, you know, if you choose not to drink, if you choose not to do drugs and all that other stuff, and you feel like you're being pressured into doing so, stand your ground. That's what I do. I do it on a constant basis. I don't care if someone, I, I, I don't care if people like it. I don't care if people love it. It doesn't matter, it's my life. And at the end of the day, you have to be happy with yourself. You have to be content with yourself. And if you feel like you're around people that aren't, aren't in your best interest, then it's time to go. Surroundings are everything. Right, so in other words, be your own person, be your Absolutely. own individual, regardless of what the world thinks of you, walk the path that you feel is right for you. Right, pick your friends wisely. Yeah. You're gonna make millions of friends in life, but you're only gonna have two or three true friends. Sure, That's sure. the way it is. Yeah, and the saying is uh, you get by with a little help from your friends, right? Right. That's so true. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mate, thank you so much for thank coming you, down. Appreciate you. Yes, thank you so thank much. You for taking the time to come down Always. and talk to us yeah. from your busy wrestling schedule. <laughs> and uh, maybe we'll hit the gym or something at some point. Absolutely. You can give yeah. me some pointers. For sure. So I can look as buff as you. <laughs> Let's do it, yeah.